We're talking to uh, Ben Weisner. He's a Harvard uh, graduate. In fact, I have to tell you the secret, which is that our producer, Karsten, and Ben were freshman year roommates at Harvard, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, he also studied law at NYU uh, and it was a law clerk to uh, Stephen Reinhardt at the U.S. Court of Appeals, the Ninth Circuit. Um, and right now he is and has been for at the ACLU for the last 15 years, currently director of the Speech Privacy and Technology Project. That is right up our alley, isn't it? Speech Privacy and Technology. We talk about that almost incessantly on all of our shows because our audience particularly is concerned with privacy implications to the point where you know, Google comes out with a new phone or this new Google Home or Amazon comes out with the Echo and people are saying, I don't know if I want a, a microphone in my house. So I think more than the average bear, our audience is very interested in protecting their privacy. Or Let's talk about speech for a second. Lee. Yeah. I mean, I, because I think people don't remember that it wasn't inevitable that the Internet would be this extraordinary forum for free speech, the greatest one in the history of the world. Um, then in the 90s, when people were just becoming aware of the internet and starting to use it, Congress passed a law called the Communications Decency Act. Oh, God. And what that law would have done, if it had fully taken effect, is it would have put in place on the internet the same speech rules that we have on radio and television. Yeah. You would have had the FCC policing the internet with a decency regime. You know, at that time, the members of the Supreme Court, when the ACLU brought a case challenging this, uh, had never seen the internet. And the story goes that they gathered around the computer of one law clerk just to see what websites were. Uh, <laughs> and and, and that, that ACLU lawsuit and that decision in a case called ACLU versus Reno, uh, in some ways was the Magna Carta for the open internet that we you know, you. live with today. Now, there are downsides to it, obviously. Uh, anytime there is a um, uh, free wheeling forum for free speech, people say some ugly things to each other and everyone um, who, you know, listens to this uh, podcast has experienced that personally or knows someone who has, um, uh, you know, on the other hand, the cost of trying to regulate it, especially with criminal law, uh, would have been uh, an internet completely unrecognizable to those of us today. Yeah. As bad as 4chan or Reddit or Twitter can be, I don't think anybody who's paying attention wants the FCC to be able to ban the uh, eight, eight dirty words on the internet. That is not great. And of course, I'm, I'm old enough to remember 1995 when the National Science Foundation said for the first time, okay, commercial speech is also uh, okay on the internet. Um, right. And there's there's pros and cons to that, but I think in general, the freer internet is good for, for everybody, and I think we all uh, support that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you and the ACLU for... Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think people don't don't realize how close that was. 